we are live hello happy <laughs> sunday happy, i always feel good everyone watching to to stream live through zoom you're on one page you hit live there's a little bit of a delay so we're always like wait oh here we are <laughs> we're alive we're alive yes. happy yes. sunday happy sunday lucas and hi everyone welcome to our sunday live it's the second part of dreams that change our lives we're going to talk about so many good 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 things mm. last sunday we are we we shared we dared to share dreams our deepest dreams dreams that changed the trajectory in our lives and lucas was talking about a dream where he became a wolf and i was talking about a dream where i flew off the edge of a cliff and those dream and how those dreams changed our lives because we understood how to use them as tools but we also talked about dreams as altered states of consciousness. We talked about visualization, even the experience of having an out of body experience. And I think also that we touched upon how we can use dreams as tools. And I think that we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. Also, we are going to talk about, um, or we're going to answer questions which yes. you yeah. left for us really really exciting questions so i think let's let's just roll <laughs> let's jump in one of the questions that was asked last time was why do we wake up at 3 a.m and i mm -hmm. said for many years i had woken up for a while it was 2 34 a.m i would wake up at 2 34. Mm -hmm. ironically my daughter was born at 2 34 also i mean it's just like yeah. I'd wake up every night, bam. And then it started waking up at 3 a.m. And someone else who was watching last week said the same thing happens to them. And why is that? So we did some research into why that is. And I found um, a, a, there's a lot of information about, I mean, this is, I, they said 10% of people are awake at 3 a.m. because of they're awakened at three. It's not because of a choice that 10% of um, the population gets awoken at three o'clock. That's a massive amount of people. And yeah, <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. It it is. It is. And I think that it's it's a magic time of the day. What I found is that there are two times of the day where this magical time is, and one is actually at dusk, and the other one is at dawn. And for me, it's not about the pinpoint time of 3 a.m. It's about the time when light enters darkness during the night. Mm. That is when I wake up. So I thought that, okay, I need to check this out. Why am I so drawn to this when light enters the darkness in the night? And it is there is a reason why this hour is so important to all of us. It is because the it is the thinning of the veil between life and death, the thinning of the veil between the, the physical realm and the spiritual realm, which means that it's like a door that is open to the spiritual world, meaning your higher self. And even the Urban Dictionary talks about this. Uh, let me just find it here. It says that it is, it is a time of the day where you can communicate with the spirits, literally. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm not so much interested in maybe communicating with the spirits. What I am interested in is the subconscious mind of myself and my higher self, because that is when this veil is as thinnest. So we can communicate. It's like the spirits and my higher self is always there. But at this time of the day, a door is open and I can communicate with it. So if your highest self knows that you need to change something, that you are in pain, emotional, physical, whatever it is, it will open that door at that specific time at night and wake you up. And you need to be aware, you need to be conscious and you need to start figuring out why, what is it that you need to change in order to stop awakening up at three o'clock in the morning. It's like your soul is calling you on the phone. That's a Pick real up, it says. <laughs> why instead of what i think people yeah the why is so important why am i awake right now versus what woke me up and that what i've talked about this coming from being a journalist and a reporter 
there's five questions to make a story who, what, when, where, and why. Mm-hmm. Humanity is really good at talking about who, what, when, where. But those are only facts and figures. The why question is the only question that engages the heart. It's the only emotional question that propels us into purpose. And when we ask what, what woke me up, it can become contentious. We can get frustrated. We can get angry. We can get, why am I, not necessarily why am I awake, but this, what is it that I can't sleep? When we ask why, it opens us up Mm -hmm. to the greater message that we need to see receive and it's not contentious and when we ask why that's where the answers come i think that exactly why did i awaken at this time if we if we go into fear and say there's something waking me up i can't sleep this is horrible i'm having nightmares you are focusing on the negative aspect of not sleeping during the night whereas when you say why have i been awoken who is wakening me up and why? And then if you understand that this is a phone call from your soul, you might wanna answer and say, I'm here and I'm listening. What do you need to tell me? Mm-hmm. Listening means to be quiet with yourself, to breathe in and out, open up because you're standing in this doorway, you're opening up to the information that comes to you. Mm-hmm. Our dreams, Sometimes I feel like my dream self knows more about me than I do in my awakened um, state of mind because I have an ego. When I am awake, my ego will stop me from exploring certain things because it doesn't want me to see it. Whereas when I sleep, my ego is not as active, which means that I will be shown things that I might not always want to look at when I'm awake. So in a sense, my true motives and my true intentions will be shown to me in a dream state. It's like going to school. You will learn new things about yourself. You will know what your true motive is. And it might look like this. I have a project at work and I want this project to be really, really good. I want this project to succeed. And you might think that I want the project to to succeed, but what my real motive is that I want everyone to see that I am really intelligent, that I am smart, that I am good. And that's my true intention or my true motive. And if I'm not aware of this, then I will feel suffering and pain if this project doesn't work out the way I want it to work out, even if it is a success, but nobody says you did it, then I will sit there with this feeling of not being appreciated by everyone because I didn't know my true motive in a dream that might turn up as a nightmare, showing me that I'm focusing my happiness in the wrong direction and wants me to turn it back in the right direction. So just understanding that everything that comes in a dream shows you that there is a motive, there is an intention, It will show you all your hidden thoughts, wants, needs, desires in a very, very visual way. You can't hide from it. It will be there showing you what you need to change, but you need to interpret it. Unless you interpret it, it it won't be of any help to you. So the, the same thing when you go to sleep, you expect that when you wake up in the morning, your body is relaxed and it is not t- you're not tired, you're able to move around because your body has been replenished during the night. Well, your mind is the same thing. It de- detoxifies itself during the night. But if you are not willing to look at it, the detoxification doesn't work. The detoxification needs your awareness, your understanding, your light, meaning you need to Figure out why you had the dream. What is the dream telling you about yourself? And this is why dreams are so important. But I don't know why we have done this in our society, that dreams seems like a, a, a separate part of us when in truth, it is an integral part of who we are, yes. literally showing us our character, helping us to become our be- the best version of ourselves. So we need to look at dreams, really, even the, the bad dreams, look at it and see what am I learning about myself here? Yeah, 
that the learning, the integration, we were talking before we went live, why integration is so important. And Blake, mm -hmm. you asked, you know, what if we're unable to remember our dreams? And I can mm -hmm. speak for so long. I could, I could only remember these nuclear bomb dreams that got inserted in my life. It was this figure that was coming closer, but didn't move. And I was losing space and I felt the sense of dread this and it would recur i was getting chased by these men i was grabbing my mom and brother and we hide in these cages and they find us wake me up it woke me up and then this wolf dream these are these three dreams this wolf dream where the wolf's biting my my bicep and it's tearing my flesh and i'm holding this wolf like what do i do with it kill it or integrate it and those are the three dreams that i remember two recurred one is one time and i integrated but i think my wife has this incredible gift. Every, every morning she wakes up, she tells me about her dreams vividly, like to the detail. I'm like, I just woke up. I mean, not that I, I don't remember dreams that often, but what I have learned is that we dream every night. Every night we are dreaming. Every night we are traveling. Every night we are learning. Every night we are engaging in a different realm. And what I've learned sitting in ceremony in sacred plant ceremonies is the integration is so important. And sometimes we can't, for whatever reason, there's a veil or a blocker on remembering the details. And so what I've done and what I do now is I ask for everything of my highest good to be recalled. Everything that I need to, that my higher self wants to teach me to bring it forth to my consciousness. And I teach this when I coach people and it is incredible. Sometimes a week later, it will come to the surface and I'm like, oh yeah, and I'll remember it as if it just happened, but it was a week ago. And the integration of that remembering is so important. So if you can't remember your dreams, I would ask the same question. What is it that I need to recall during the day to integrate? Because the integration is so important. Without integration, we're still fragmented. We're still like loose when we bring that all back into ourselves, there's so many lessons in the spiritual realm that we are engaging with at night. And it's so fascinating sleeping. What is sleep? Our body. I mean, we check out, we're as most vulnerable as we'll ever be. And we're fine with it. People are free to speak in front of others, but they're fine going to sleep at night. It's such a bizarre concept. And, and yet that's when we learn such deep and profound lessons. Well, I think you you actually um, touched upon a really important aspect when you ask, what is sleep? I think we have been conditioned to think that sleep is unconsciousness. You know, you go to sleep and you're unconscious. Where and, and that what that is what happens when you wake up in the morning and you have no recollection of any dream. Mm -hmm. Well, the quantum field, your higher self, God, or whatever we want to call it out there, is listening to your intentions and your will. And if you go to bed and you say, Okay, so tonight I'm going to night school. Night school, that is dream the dream world the dream realm to treat the dream realm as another room or another space where you enter during night your body is asleep but you enter dream space and to treat it like going to the theater where you have the leading role and everyone else are actors there for your benefit to show you whatever you need to know about yourself in hidden or more less hidden way. And if you have that intention when you go to bed at night to say to yourself, okay, so tonight I am going to dream. I'm going into dream school. I'm going to learn new things about myself. And I am going to remember what I need to remember in the morning. Yes, yes continuously doing this when you go to bed. I promise you, Blake, hi Blake, by the way, <laughs> promise you that you will remember more and more and more of your dreams. Also keeping some kind of journal just to jot down things that happen to you because you think that when you wake up or before you wake up that you will remember everything and then it slips your mind. Writing it down, you can go back and you will be able to see um, more and more of your dreams to go back and to 
recap in a way what you dreamt a week ago and that might be connected to something that you dreamt yesterday mm. so treating the dream state as not unconsciousness but as a way to learn new things about yourself and trying or having the intention to be more conscious in your own dream not awake because you are asleep but being more conscious in your in your dream because the way i see dreams it's just an altered state of consciousness which means that another type of consciousness but still consciousness which means that you are there and you can remember if you put that as an intention out there that's right because th that is so important intention because mm -hmm. the law of free will cannot be broken what happens mm -hmm. is we usually do not operate under the law of free will we have forgotten our sovereignty nothing can cross our free will so if we set our intention through the night that only mm -hmm. the highest good the highest blessings the deepest lessons whatever we want to take last night i said i'm i'm i want to ask for project i'm ready so i had a bizarre mm -hmm. night of sleep it was so wild but mm -hmm. i set my intention of getting into that realm and I was prepared for whatever happened and it was wild. I didn't ask for Jack, mm. but I was battling and it was intense and wrestling mm. and vivid and, um, but I was prepared. Now I have not had a night like I had last night because I have not yet set, or I hadn't set that intention before, but I always say my gratitudes before I go to sleep. I always say my mm. I am's. I mean, that's where the concept of prayer came in. It's setting mm. consciousness and intention and nothing can cross our free will, nothing. However, mm -hmm. most people don't set their intentions. So they're just laissez faire with this body and this consciousness and whatever happens, happens. And mm -hmm. they're not even awake to the fact that as sovereign beings, we are the creators of this reality and nothing mm -hmm. can cross that line. Mm -hmm. Also remembering that whatever it is that you're experiencing in your dream state, it is there for your benefit. Mm -hmm. It's not all, it doesn't always feel like it. And I'll give you an example. My, when my father and my mother were, they were going through a divorce very late in their marriage. Uh, my mother asked me to help her with this. So I was stuck in between them as a messenger back and forth, which was a very, very uncomfortable place for me to be. And this was just 10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago. I did not want to be in that position. And yet there I was. So during the night, I had a dream where I had a black being on my chest, which was, it was horrific. I couldn't breathe. It was almost like dream paralysis. I couldn't do anything. And this being was looking me straight in the eye. And I felt total fear. When I wake up in the morning, I, I was thinking to myself, why in heaven's name do I dream this? Not, not only am I frustrated during the daytime because I'm running back and forth between those two human beings who cannot solve their own problems. I cannot even sleep at night because I have a monster sitting on my chest. And that's when I realized that this monster on my chest was my guilt. It told me, stop feeling guilty and this allow them to do their own thing say that you do not want to be their messenger and when i did that i felt good because i it this is what i mean when you go into a dream and you see yourself in everything in that dream you will understand what you need to shift and change if i would have accepted the dream as a nightmare i would be fearful of going to sleep the night after that Right. Because what if I dream this dream again, because it scared the berserks out of me, but going for what is the beneficial thing with this? What is this fear? What is this thing trying to tell me? Well, it's a weight. What do I need to lift off my chest? Well, this, I don't want to be their messenger. So I just change something in my real world. I never dreamt anything like that after, after it. So it is a school. It is a way to get to know yourself better. And your dreams are a place where your false beliefs about yourself will become 
images that you will see and the images are not always beautiful because it's about the false beliefs so you need to look at them and ask yourself what is it in this belief that is not resonating with me right. and then when you're awake you can make the change that you need to change mm -hmm. so it's about looking at it and seeing the benefits even in a nightmare which by the way is one of the questions that you asked, why are we dreaming nightmares? Well, because there are false beliefs that are working through you during the day, which is not putting you on the right path in your life. And in your dream state, the theater, the, the night school will tell you, you have a demon sitting on your chest. It's called guilt. You can get rid of it if you want to. Mm. It's really the because we're in that most vulnerable state, the teachers for our consciousness during the day, for instance, like last week, or yeah, last week when we were doing our live, and I talked about the wolf dream, but then mm -hmm. year, two years, three years prior, I had that vision while I was walking, I almost daydreamed while I was walking four miles to the, I didn't even know where I was going. I ended up at a grocery store and I was in such a daze that I see my friends in the grocery store and I'm like, oh, hey. And they're like, hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, oh, good. You know, I was like, I was still in this vision. It was really wild um, that I was this golden retriever and that I kept putting my back onto the ground and I would get bit by other dogs. And I would say to the dogs, I don't understand why you're doing this to me. I would never hurt you and I would get lower into the ground. It was almost like I was concaving the ground, the earth, hurting myself just to show mm -hmm. I'm not a threat and I would keep getting bit. And this was recurring over and over in my life. I would draw these, these abusive men into my life that would keep doing this pattern over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And then I had this wolf dream in December of 2019 that, that radically woke me up. And I realized I am not a golden retriever. And as long as I continue to operate as a golden retriever, I will continue to retract that which is the predator of the golden retriever. I am a wolf. I was raised by a wolf. I understand the wolf. I know the nuance, the how, the time, the cadence. Mm -hmm. And I used to say of myself when I was in the context of the golden retriever that I was like a deer because I'm really, that's why I was really good in my ad agency it's, i'm really good with nuance and branding and it's not what's said it's what's said what's Meant. not said you know yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah. all this ethereal uh narrative but i used to mm -hmm. say i'd hear a crack in the like a branch break and i'd turn you hear that and everyone's like what i don't hear anything but i was always hypersensitive well as a victim mindset which i was for so long yes i was aware of what was the threat but now <laughs> as the wolf I can see, oh, I got it. I can either engage it, and sometimes I do, or I can move people who I'm protecting. I can move the pack away from that threat, but it's no longer it's coming for me. It's just a, now a conscious decision in my sovereignty. What will I engage with and what will I not? And those were, that was 20, that was 2017. I had that vision of the, the golden retriever and this 2019 that I had the dream of the wolf. So that's two years of integration and lessons learned. And why I share this timeline, I was thinking about this this morning. It's some, we get hung up sometimes on the dream or that's why integration is so important. That was a two year integration process that I needed to mm -hmm. learn. And if I just stuck on that, was stuck on that one point, I might've remained in self beat up or I might've, what did that mean about me then? as opposed mm. to what am I here to learn in the longevity mm. of my beingness here on this planet with my consciousness? Absolutely. And, and it does literally show you where the false belief is not working for you. I mean, false beliefs will never work for you, but right. when you can see it, I mean, you will, it's not to be kind is, it is not about to protect yourself, to be kind is to, because you want to be kind for, to someone. But in your case, you were kind because you knew that if I'm kind, they won't hurt me. Right. 
And there is, there is a false belief system going on there, which will not lead you to the right place. When you have children, for instance, it will, it will not lead you where you need to be. So this is why you have this dream where you are a golden retriever and still everybody is hurting you and you can't understand why. Well, it is because you are not who you truly are, not just the wolf, but the sovereign being who knows who you are and you will not lay down unless you want to do so. It's about your free will. It's about understanding your power, understanding who you are with that power. Mm -hmm. And it is a profound dream. It really is a profound dream. You have to recognize it as a profound dream. But even the small dreams, you know, we dream several times during the night and whatever it is that you can remember, you can actually accelerate your integration and your expansion by this intention when you go to bed that I want to remember what I dream about. I want to be able to utilize the lesson. Mm. That is an intention you need to put in the evening to say, okay, so here we go. Dream school, I'm entering this. That's how you can make the most out of the dreams. Mm. I mean, there are different types of dreams. We are talking about dreams that feel like they changed our lives because you can remember it there are other types of dreams the reoccurring dreams for instance and we talked about them the last sunday too the dreams that won't let us um that that we cannot release have you had a reoccurring dream yes i had i had two specific reoccurring dreams and both of them so interesting i was looking for again the book the prophet <laughs> i wanted to show mm -hmm. until i i was so afraid of even when i got that book and i had heard about it for years i avoided it because of the cover scared me because it reminded me of this recurring dream it was this faceless mm -hmm. figure that would on this sandy plane it was like a movie it was almost like star wars and it didn't move at all and it stared at me without a face and it kept coming closer to me without moving. So as if, if the earth was being removed between us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was coming, I felt such fear and dread. So, in fact, I remember the first time I had this dream, I was four and I had a fever and that's when, so I had it during a nap and I'd have this dream over and over and over again. And that's where finally, I did this emotional intelligence training and I became, I was chosen as the, the torchbearer and I was doing, I, I was, I finally faced my greatest fears in that thing. And someone said, cause I told the story about the prophet. I was afraid. And they said, look at the cover of that book and look at you. And I looked at myself and they're like, that cover is you. And I was like, yes. And they're like, you were afraid you, the real, you, the true essence of you was coming closer and it scared you because what did that actually mean? And at the time it meant had I integrated my full self as a child mm. who said, even be here today. Mm. So it mm. all happened at the perfect timing, but, um, that reoccurring dream, it's like in my DNA, I feel it right actually i can feel that dream right now as if it i had it last night yeah i mean uh, reoccurring dreams in detail which it's almost like a movie being played over and over and over again that's one one way of having a reoccurring dream then there is reoccurring themes like you're dreaming different dreams only it's the same theme in the dream like being haunted or walking naked through the street and everybody's looking at you. There are, there are these themes. And I think those dreams are really important because if you have a reoccurring theme, that mm -hmm. means that there is something that you really, really, really need to look at. Why are you, why is your higher self repeating this for you? It means like you, you need to look at this, really, really need to look at it. Maybe, for me it oh sorry yeah, go, go ahead no go for it no yeah but for me as a child i had this reoccurring dream where i dreamt that i was in a box and the lid would go off someone would put the lid on or the wow. other dream where i dreamt that my bed was on a, on a on a rope and it was balancing all the time and 
it was reoccurring and I couldn't do anything about it, even if I would have looked at the dream at the time and understood it, which I couldn't because I was six years old. And I kept dreaming this dream until I was 19 and moved away from home. But this is my higher self telling me that I feel locked in and insecure. I am out of balance when I am in the family that I was born in because I had a, a bad childhood. And this reoccurring theme was showing me, yes, it is so. You are out of balance and there is fear where you are right now. But as a child, you can shift it, you can not change it. So, so that's why you need to allow it to be there. But as soon as I changed my outer world or my awake state of being, the dream stopped. Yeah. Because in a way, I learned the lesson or it solved itself. So there is... There is so much knowledge to get in the dream world if we are open to it and willing to look at it. It's interesting too, those recurring dreams that you had, those two and the two that I had. There's a great theme in our lives that we get to be the hero's journey and mm. we can either accept that we are the hero of our own story, face mm. our fears, go through that journey and come out the other side, the hero, the conquering hero, mm. or we can continually avoid the fear, play someone else, a character in someone else's hero story, and then mm. constantly being victim of why am I not, what, why don't I have, mm. you know, what is wrong with me, look at them. Mm. And I think for a long time, I was, I mean, I definitely was had the victim mindset for most of my life until I was 36 years old. And vulnerability, this is, this is interesting, tying this back about the theme of fear and love. Vulnerability, as I define it, is having the courage to experience love in its purest form. And when we're asleep, we're our most vulnerable during the night. Mm -hmm. And we're learning these lessons of, I mean, heroic journeys. Where either, some people have massive dreams. Some people have very simple dreams. That Whatever it is, there's usually a lesson of fear, overcoming fear. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? We wake up, we have to go to work, we brush our teeth, we get the day started and we forget that the lesson of overcoming fear and looking at like that demon on your chest, looking mm -hmm. you right in the eyes, the guilt was saying, mm -hmm. look, it was like the wolf bite, look, just right yes. at me. I had to look at it back mm -hmm. and say, the the measure of force that you are bringing to me i am willing to bring it back to you mm -hmm. and if you're not willing to live with the consequences of that force that i bring back to you then you have to make the choice is it worth it mm -hmm. and when we can face our fears and become vulnerable and pierce the veil of fear and i think the veil mm -hmm. of fear is like the thinnest it's it's almost like a you know, the bubbles that kids play with, like they blow yes. bubbles. That's how thin mm -hmm. fear is. You can easily pop it, but it's so opaque. You can't see through it. So it feels mm -hmm. like pitch black and the fear is coming. And if we just mm -hmm. had the courage to go, boop, <laughs> and mm -hmm. the light penetrates, we're like, this is incredible. This world that we can experience and life we can have. And so it's interesting that fear is a massive lesson in mm -hmm. our dreams. It, it is because it shows you that fear is an illusion, mm. that fear isn't real. You are real. You're the dreamer. You're the one dreaming it. So you are there and you're real. And everything that is in this dream state, <laughs> in this reality, actually, is your creation. It resides in your imagination. And a dream is just a place where you can get utter knowledge about yourself and it resides in the imaginary dream world which you are creating within you with the help of your higher self so when you go there and you stay there and you dare to look fear in the eye or the demon on your chest or the wolf on your chest you realize that you survived it you're awake you're brushing your teeth so it was an illusion and it wasn't that hard to do right. it right. instead of being panicked or 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 paralyzed by that fear you can feel how you managed it because you are alive you're brushing your teeth yes yes 
And I think it is about seeing the illusion and being able to choose what illusion you want to explore. Mm. So I think that understanding that nightmares are not dangerous, it is just something that you need to look at and finding whatever it is that you need to look at and explore it, dare to explore it, to see what can I change in my reality in order to change my dream state. Mm. Because there are th those two are very, very connected. And also it's, it's about, we talked about this before we started this live, uh, live uh, Sunday live. We talked about how courageous one must be to share one's dream with others because the dreams will tell you more about who you are than what you are presenting in your physical awakened conscious state of mind. Right. It will tell you more of the dream, the, the, the fears and the hidden things that you do not want everyone to see. Your dreams will tell about that because that's where all this resides. Yes. And since you want to hide it, then of course it will pull you in the wrong direction. You need to look at it. Why am I hiding this? Is it, do I have to hide it? Mm -hmm. For me, it was this guilt that I didn't want to be the messenger between my parents. That's not my job, by the way, but still I was hiding the guilt because I was trying to be the good daughter, which is the wrong path. That's not who I am. Hmm. And you know, it's interesting too. You're, I didn't hear, I, this is the first time hearing about the box closing over you, hmm. but how powerful is that to be quiet, to be silent, to be not seen mm -hmm. and be here, but in the confines of, be nowhere <laughs> in a way you know it's, it's that's really powerful yeah it sh yes it shows me that i i could see my own fear i could see that i felt that where i was as a child was not a good place so i had this little box where i kind of put myself every night when i went to sleep in my mind mm -hmm. as soon as i started to fall asleep i felt this box around me and then Every time the lid went down, I would wake up because I was afraid that I was going to be stuck in this box. That's, that's, that's the best visualization of my childhood is this little box. Mm. It really is. It's enough to talk about the box and you will know everything about my reality because there was not any space for me to be in that home. I had to watch everything. I had to watch myself and everything. And the lid could just be closed down any minute of my life. And, and this dream showed me this. I knew that it was that. But as a child, I didn't know it. I was just afraid of it. But now when I look back at it, it's a, it's a reoccurring dream. And I can use it as a tool to understand that freedom is one of my non-negotiable truths in life. I will not be put in a box. <laughs> that, is, that, that is a very, very strong non-negotiable truth in my life. And this dream showed me, even as a child, that this is who you are. You cannot be contained in a box. That is, your true nature is freedom. Yes. So just seeing it for that, I could use the dream as something to, like, I had this horrible nightmare coming back to me every night when I was a child. Oh, it was so horrible, period, nothing more. Right. That is not how you use the dream. How you use the dream is to understand why did it came, come back to me? All, why, again, the question, why? And then look for the beneficial answer because the why could be because God doesn't love you and that's the wrong answer. <laughs> that's right. Or you deserve to be punished. Someone asked. Yes, yes. How do you prove dreams are not dangerous, and well, what does it mean to have a dangerous dream? Can I mean, what is dangerous? Yeah, right. Can you be hurt in your dream? I will say I had a very unusual experience. I don't know if I've ever told you this. I was not yet asleep, but I was going to sleep in my bed. And I was working as the audience coordinator for this local talk show in Seattle. And we had all sorts of celebrities and people come through. And this woman named Sylvia Brown, she used to be on Montel Williams show all the time. She was a psychic person. 
but I will never forget. She looked at me. I'm in the, I'm, I'm the one that makes the audience clap and smile. And I place people where they're supposed to be so that when the cameras cut to the audience, the right demographics there. And she looked at me and it was the, I felt zinged. She like zinged me. It was bizarre. And she looked at me <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And that night I'm laying in bed and I'm almost asleep. It's 11. I will never forget. It's 1150 at night. I'm almost asleep. And I got cut on my arm from bicep around my, uh, my tricep. And I was like, is there a razor? It felt like a razor blade was in my bed. And I'm looking around. There's no razor blade. And I was bleeding physically. I called who was my girlfriend at the time. My, my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I'm like, I just had the craziest thing happen. Like it was the weirdest thing. So sometimes the spiritual can penetrate into the physical. It can manifest. But even then I was okay. I really, I thought it was maybe her. I don't know. It was definitely a bizarre day that, that she looked at me. But my point is, was it dangerous? No, it was still like a dream. It was still like that wolf. It woke me up to a greater reality, a greater truth. Was I in danger? No, not really. I was still mm -hmm. safe. No one was coming in my room, but I had a, I had a bizarre experience where something manifested on me physically from a different realm or a different, you know, and I did a lot of research on voodoo dolls and like what mm -hmm. are those things they're doing something in the physical sending it spiritual mm -hmm. to touch the their physical um, being mm -hmm. however no dream have and i've had like i was going to be hunted and killed my whole life those one of recurring mm -hmm. dreams i'm still here i needed to have that dream to wake me up to i'm mm -hmm. not the hunted i'm mm -hmm. actually the hunter <laughs> and that's probably why they kept me feeling like I was the hunted because if you can keep someone from remembering who they really are, who they truly are, the power and the sovereignty and the creative abilities that we have when we speak from that non-victim place, from that sovereign space, mm -hmm. then you've kept the greatest miracle from coming forth. But when we remember who we are, that's why I love your book. And everyone, mm -hmm. if you have yet to buy Granada's book, go out, please, and buy it for the simple, I mean, for many reasons, but for one, you will wake up to who you are. Mm -hmm. And who you are is not from what someone else says you are. It's who you truly know you are. And I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, who you think you are, you really are. Like deep mm -hmm. down deep down, like, I want to be this. You are that. You can't concede that which you are not. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent, but that's so powerful. Yeah. Of course, you're absolutely right. I mean, when you know who you are, then you are literally untouchable because who you truly are cannot be hurt by anything in any realm. So knowing who you are will always protect you. Also, if you feel like you are in a state where you think that something might happen to you during the night, you can always put out an intention and say that everything I dream is for my benefit. Mm. Because it cannot go against your will. You actually have to become more aware of what it is you want to dream, what kind of reality you want to create in your dream landscape and say that it is for your benefit. Mm. And nothing bad can happen to you in that state of mind because you're the master of that state of mind. Nothing can enter a frequency which you set where you say that you are not um, for the good of all and for the good of you. It cannot break that spell. Nothing from the spiritual world can do that. And by the way, while we're speaking about the spiritual world, there are dreams that I remember, I've had two or three of them, which were really, really mind boggling to me. This was, I think maybe 20 years ago or more than that, maybe 25 years ago. I had a friend and she had cancer and she was actually dying of cancer. And I was supposed to visit her at hospital and something happened at work and I didn't have the time. And then I came home and during the 
the twilight or the, the dawn, the, the, the magical hours between three and five in the morning. This happened actually 4.30 in the morning. Mm. I felt that I woke up in my bedroom. It was light and I sat up in my bedroom and through the door came my friend and she was dressed in white. She had a nightgown on and she had this white nightgown I was thinking, wow, she walks so cool. It doesn't look like she's walking. It looks like she's hovering. She comes to my bed, sits down beside me, takes my face in her hands and says, I'm okay now. You don't have to worry. And then she just hovers out again. And I'm like, this is bizarre. I'm awake. This is my bedroom. And I try to wake my husband up, but I can't. I'm not allowed to wake him up. I can't even, I can't touch him in a way. And then I go to sleep again and I remember the dream in the morning. And my mother calls me while I drink coffee and tells me that my friend had passed away during the night. And I knew in my, in every fiber of my body, I knew that she walked through that veil that night and gave me a last goodbye. And this wasn't the, first, the, the, the last time I had a dream like this. It was profound because it was so vivid. It wasn't lucid dreaming. It was like I was awake. Mm. And yet I knew that there was something different. There was something in the light, the way she looked, the way she walked. She looked perfectly well and she was really sick at the time. She had hair, which she didn't have at the time. So. It was profound, profound dream or whatever it was, encounter, because this was an altered state of consciousness, which I perceived as a dream. But I can't say that it was a dream because I was in the same room. Mm. Really, really weird. And so using all the states of consciousness we have in order to explore who we are and what this whole reality is about is what I, I love doing it. It feels that's what we're here to do, to open up to all the states of consciousness, not just this one awakened state. That's right. That's right. When we release fear mm -hmm. and we receive True. the love that is available, this existence this reality becomes like a playground mm -hmm. and my wife and i were talking yesterday about the karmic law is we are it is it's touching us all the time what we say to ourselves becomes the reality and mm -hmm. it it will give us exactly because it wants to show us how powerful we are but when we don't realize what we speak actually becomes the reality we will be in victim mode of why is it i'm this i'm that i'm this i'm that versus when we can release all that fear and receive all the love this reality becomes fun it becomes a playground it becomes dreaming's amazing waking's amazing and yes are there moments where like we were talking about energies can fly in and like, whoa, where did mm -hmm. this come from? But when we are not in the fear state and we're in the awareness state, we can shift more quickly. We can then mm -hmm. realize that we can shift more quickly. So then the next time mm -hmm. something comes into our energetic field, we see it, we look at it and say, okay, thank you. I release you. Adios. <laughs> What's mm -hmm. next? And that is what, I, if I could bless every person on this planet with, it is releasing their fear truly letting it go and waking up to the sovereignty and beauty of this creation, this life. And it is so short. This life is so short and yet it is so long and beautiful at the same time. And dreams yeah. help remember that. Yes. The releasing of fear is actually, I mean, it feels good to say it, but then when you try to do it, I mean, full moon, a house full of people, and you know exactly where that goes. Fear just poof, like this. The ego mind will always look for something to protect you from, which will be making you be in a fearful state. For me, when I think about releasing fear, it's more about being aware 
and being present in the now moment in order to shift, in order to flip things around and try to find the benefits in them. Mm, yeah. Because if I only look at it and I say, oh, this is horrible, this is fear, I am not shifting it. And in this reality, there's always light and darkness. There's always a plus and a minus. There's always a brighter and a darker side. And if I am not present and courageous enough to shift, to look for the brightest side, to look for the benefits, whatever the demon on my chest, to look for the benefits in why am I dreaming about the demon on my chest? If I'm not looking for that, then I fall prey to fear. And it will paralyze me, it will stagnate me, it will keep me in a prison, which my higher self will not allow me to be in. So it will give me nightmares and other ways to wake me up. But if I am present, and if I allow myself to look for the brightest side, whatever comes to me, look for the brightest side. That is how I release fear. Mm because I can't command myself to say, I release all fear. It, it doesn't work. I have, to, I have to do it in small steps. I have to look at things and literally convince myself that, oh, this wasn't as dangerous as I thought it was, mm -hmm. and then I can release it. That's how I find my power in the small moments where I shift things. It's the same thing in the dream. I mean, if I just stand there paralyzed by something, then I know that I need to kind of move a little bit in order to be able to move in the right direction. So I, it's like being present. It's really important to become more present, courageous and trusting at the same time. It's a balancing act where you need to be courageous and trusting because you know for sure that whatever is there is there for your benefit. Mm, yeah. Right. Regardless of what state of consciousness you're in, dream state or awake state or whatever consciousness, state of consciousness you're in. Mm. I mean, there are so many different states of consciousness and we call that dream world and the real world. But yeah. in the dream world, there are so many things you can explore. And I know that our time is soon up, but I need to share this. There are dreams where you literally can look around the corner in time so that you can see things in the future. I've had a dream like that and not just one, several of them, but the one that I really do remember was connected to 9-11. It was the night before 9-11 and we went to bed and I, I had this dream where I couldn't move I, my body felt like a brick, I couldn't move. And I tried to wake my husband up, but I couldn't because the dream that I was dreaming was so horrifying. I was dreaming that I was in a building and it was fire and a woman was trying to jump out of the window and I wanted to stop her, but I couldn't because there was a being holding me back. And this being shifted faces eight times it shifted its face and I was looking at it and I was paralyzed by this shifting mm. and I had a knife in my hand and I couldn't I couldn't push the knife through the being which was scaring me because I don't know there's something in me that says I cannot kill something so I was pushing this knife and looking at this this horrible thing and screaming to this woman, do not jump out. It's, too, it's so high up, you will die, don't jump up. And she says, the danger comes from within. It's the fire from within, so to speak. And so I found myself hanging outside the windows like this and looking down and that's when I woke up. And I told my husband about the dream and he said, wow, that was profound. And I forgot about it. And then 4.20 our time in Sweden, which was exactly your time when, or I don't remember if it was four, but it was late in the afternoon, the yeah. news came up. The next day I was looking in the newspapers and I saw these people hanging outside the window. And that's when this dream, I remembered my dream. And I said to my husband, oh my God, this would, it looks like the window where I was hanging outside of it. So this led me to start looking, did anyone else have a dream before? Mm. And it is mind-bogglingly 
I can't even tell you how many people had this dream before 9-11. It's like they felt that there was something profound going on. It's like our collective consciousness was preparing for something. Mm -hmm. And some people who are more sensitive to this tapped into it during the night. I've never had anything as profound as this. I mean, everything was so vivid and yet I didn't remember it. And then a few hours later when I saw it in the newspapers, that's when the dream popped up again. And if I wouldn't have told my husband, then it would look like I fabricated it all, but I didn't. I told him in the morning and he remembers it. So it's, uh, it's really, really cool to see that there are this veil between the real world and the dream world, when it is very, very thin, we are able to look into time too, if we want to. It's powerful. It's powerful. Okay, I want to share one thing that's fascinating. <laughs> this is, I don't, so I it's a, okay. I have a book called, um, well, I have this book on, on linguistics and language and letters, and it talks about when there was a time in the 1600s when we would say letter, the word letter in English, and we meant the character, the letter. And then through intention of some people, they changed the concept of letter, a letter to a body of words, letter. So I wrote a letter and we would think, oh, a body of words. But the book talks about the power of each individual character. And look at what the Japanese do and the Chinese do with, they care about every character. Well, it used to be that in English, but we have been so dumbed down and watered down in our language set that we don't understand what these are. So they talk about the word, uh, the letter B. B, nothing precedes B. B has round, so everything comes forth from B. Nothing precedes B. Beginning, burst, boom, bomb, bang, birth b actually represents what the words mean so mm -hmm. i was thinking about this the other day d it's very similar death dream die but then i was thinking well it's not the end if the b if nothing precedes the b and it continues forth then the d is a continuation of something next too so dreams, we are stepping into what we are to learn to wake up and bring into the day, the day, mm -hmm. to bring mm -hmm. back into the dream, to bring back into the day, to bring back. So death is to bring back into the, the next step. It's not mm -hmm. the end. It's just stepping into. And when mm -hmm. I realized this the other day, how powerful it is when I can release the fear of there is no finality, there's no this is it and you blew it or you didn't, you didn't <laughs> learn the lesson. You know what? It's like, no, I get to integrate and play and, and it takes the pressure away. And I guess coming back and assuring that is like that profound dream of nine 11. Well, what mm -hmm. else could we wake up to perceiving and holding space for people to heal? What are we, we're forget what, where are human where is humanity missing the opportunity to have a playful perspective of this entire reality that we're in dream and day mm -hmm. so that we can hold space and create more beauty together versus live in that fear and finality and this mm -hmm. is it and constricted and playing small and victim mm -hmm. and i think as we're stepping into the 5d consciousness as the schumann resonance is showing us that the earth is raising its vibration that we are all moving into this beautiful state that perhaps when Jesus says in the, the gospels, greater things that I have done, you will do. Perhaps we are just about to wake up as humanity of, wow, we can actually do incredible things here. So. Absolutely. It's, it's about becoming a whole being and having a holistic way of our lives, not compartmentalizing it into day and night, compartmentalizing it into dream and awake, conscious and unconscious. There's no such thing as unconscious. It's, it's, it's only hidden information which you need to get. 
by asking for it with your free will and intention. Intention is one of the most powerful things in this world. It bends the fabric of the universe and the intention needs to come from your heart. So just knowing that we can become more integrated in the out, the inner and outer worlds can be more integrated if we stop putting the limitations between them. If we allow this veil to be as thin as it can be so that we can use these things. I'm not saying that we should stop being in our awakened state of consciousness as the one and only consciousness we have, but integrating nighttime dreams, fantasies, imagination, visualization, under, more understanding of who we truly are and the power we have even beyond these veils or the limitations that we put on ourselves. But because every night you are given the possibility to dream two times a day, this veil between the spirit world and the real, the, the physical world is thinner. You can use that sit in meditation, do it in when the sun sets and when the sun rises, you're giving this, you're given this. You can do it anytime you wish, two times a day, sit down and meditate. Powerful. So good. That's how we integrate everything oh. into this. Well, this hour went really fast, I must say. I I, I could use one more hour to talk about this. <laughs> next Sunday. Next Sunday. Yes, next Sunday. We'll see where, where that leads us. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Lucas. And thank you, everyone, for being here with us this Sunday. We love you so much. Till next week. Bye.